It is uh, October 14th, 2020. We're looking at a 3D model of the stone basin that is found inside the right hand uh, chamber of uh, the passage to Nauth in uh, Ireland. And uh, what we're looking at here, as far as I'm concerned, uh, is a sun-moon conjunction symbol and possibly even a type of winged uh, sun symbol. Uh, here we have uh, three concentric circles, uh, the little inner one, the outer one here, and then the final outer one here. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, this represents the sun. And then we'll notice that outside of that, it's no longer concentric circle. This is not another concentric circle. On the contrary, it's, it's more of a, a large uh, crescent wrapping around the solar disk. Uh, it also has a little dot here, uh, which one person uh, has suggested is the head of a snake. Um, and I don't rule that out. I actually had pretty much the same thought as a possibility. Um, but nonetheless, I consider this outer um, crescent wrapping around the uh, concentric circles, which I consider to be the sun, uh, to be representing the moon. And uh, the moon embracing the sun, as it were, uh, in a solar eclipse. Uh, and this brings us back to the possibility of this crescent also representing a serpent, a snake, with, with this being the head of the snake and this being the body of the snake wrapping around the sun. Uh, it is actually a quite common eclipse myth that the sun is being eaten by a snake during a solar eclipse. There are two major reasons for this. One is that snakes swallow whole their prey, and more particularly, uh, egg-eating snakes swallow eggs slowly. It's, it's, you know, can easily be seen as a kind of a parallel between the sun slowly being eaten, as it were, in a solar eclipse, uh, and a snake, specifically an egg-eating snake, uh, slowly uh, swallowing an egg. Um, so it's not out of the question that this uh, crescent, which I identify as the moon, uh, coming to union with the sun in a solar eclipse, is also uh, intended to represent a, a serpent with the head of the serpent there, uh, which would indicate that if this is the case, it would indicate that the prehistoric Irish people who carved this symbol um, not only understood that the moon is responsible for eclipsing the sun, uh, but, but they identified the moon as, as the serpent that eats the sun. Um, now we also have these uh, parallel lines on either side and I agree that this may be a bit of a stretch, um, but I think it's within possibility that these horizontal lines on either side of what I have little reason to doubt is a sun-moon conjunction symbol representing a solar eclipse, um, could represent the wings of the sun's corona uh, when the uh, sunspot cycle is at minimum. Uh, the equatorial streamers of the sun are condensed like the wings of a bird and uh, they basically look like wings on either side of the eclipse sun so you have a black disk of the moon and then on either side of it you have these very condensed uh, streamers of the sun's corona on either side like wings and below the sun and indeed above it you have a fanned out pattern, uh, essentially like the poles of a magnet, because that's exactly what it is. Uh, but it also looks like the tail of a bird. So you have the tail of a bird, uh, and you have uh, the wings of a bird uh, appearing in the sun's uh, corona uh, during some solar eclipses. So 
Yesterday, I was asked by uh, somebody in the uh, Irish uh, mythology site, uh, Mythical Ireland, uh, about the symbol on the inside. And I looked all over the internet for images of the inside of the basin, and I, I had difficulty finding anything suitable. But this is perfect, because I can basically talk about the whole thing, uh, leading in from what I have very good reason to be believe is a sun-moon conjunction symbol on the outer uh, part of the uh, basin, and possibly even a winged sun symbol inspired by this bird-like pattern that's a visible in the sun's corona during some solar eclipses. So here we have a circle and then on either side of it you have these long rays coming off it. So as my interpretation keeping with the idea that this is solar eclipse symbolism is that this is essentially a, a winged sun type of eclipse. Yeah, the, the coronal streamers uh, mainly on either side of the sun and not so much above and below it and not evenly distributed around it as it is sometimes. Uh, and then we have this symbol above or possibly below. It really depends on the orientation. I mean the orientation could be like this or it could be like this. Let's come back to the symbols. The, uh, so that's the symbol on the front. It's a bit off center from this but but there we go. So you'll notice actually, notice what's happening here. This is the symbol which I identify as a sun-moon conjunction symbol uh, representing the union of the sun and the moon during a solar eclipse. This is a very common symbol found in many other cultures. Um, and here we are. We more or less have it again. Uh, this here is it's multiple crescents. It's, it's sort of two crescents, possibly even three crescents, but very, very closely associated with the sun here. Um, and then we have this winged rays on either side. So I believe that this part of the symbolism uh, carved into the inner part of the bowl could very well be uh, representing, again, uh, a solar eclipse. Um, I should add that the uh, sun itself takes on a crescent shape during uh, partial solar eclipses or, or partial phases of a total solar eclipse. Uh, and when it's an annular eclipse, when the moon's diameter is significantly smaller than the sun and it cannot totally cover it in a total eclipse, you get a ring-like uh, pattern when, when the uh, moon is uh, centrally over the, the sun. Uh, but prior to that, in the partial stages, you actually get you know, a very large crescent of the sun around the smaller moon. So, so this could also be inspired by uh, seeing a, an annular uh, eclipse of the sun. So again, I, I believe, you know, based on what I've seen in terms of other solar eclipse symbolism in uh, other Irish passage tombs, and most notably Douth, where they have very scientifically accurate depictions of, of rayed sun symbols that are identical almost to uh, scientific astronomical drawings of a total solar eclipse. Uh, and the sun-moon conjunction symbol in the outer part of the basin here. Um, and the fact that I, I do think it is within possibility that these horizontal lines are intended to represent the wings, as it were, of the uh, winged sun. Um, that here we, we just have a basically variation on, on the same theme, a uh, uh, less elaborate uh, winged sun, the uh, rays concentrated on either side of the total eclipse sun here. Um, and then this symbolism representing, you know, either the partial phases of a solar eclipse or the moon uh, coming to conjunction with the sun. Uh, I think both of these uh, possibilities are, are very uh, realistic, and, and, and it could even be both. It's, it's not as if ancient cultures didn't layer symbolism upon symbolism upon symbolism, so it's not impossible that this was 
representing the moon coming to conjunction with the sun in an eclipse, but also the partial phases of a solar eclipse. It's within possibility that both concepts were, were synth synthesized in this. I'm not very good at pronouncing synthesized. Uh, you know, and if we look at it this way, um, again, you know, more or less the same idea, uh, but it almost looks like a kind of angelic figure, um, uh, you know, almost like a head with a halo around it and these wings on either side. Um, and then we have, here we have the central uh, circle, uh, you know, which in my interpretation would be the moon eclipsing the sun during a total solar eclipse. Uh, it's not impossible that this somewhat anthropomorphic uh, view, uh, again, is, is something that, that the creators of this carving uh, possibly intended. Uh, it might be a bit of a long shot, but but uh, I think it's within possibility that this is even a, a sort of humanoid, angelic uh, being type thing as, as well. Um, and again, uh, winged mythical beings uh, were indeed inspired by the winged sun of total solar eclipses. So certainly mythical birds, bird gods, but also, also, don't know why I'm lisping here, I almost never lisp. Uh, uh, basically winged anthropomorphic beings uh, uh, or anthropomorphized bird gods uh, were also inspired by the same phenomena. So again, bit of a stretch, but I'm just looking at the possibilities here. Uh, some of the, uh, you know, ones that are very, very difficult to prove, but, but just putting out this as a possibility. Um, it's not impossible. This is a sort of a, intended to be a kind of mythical anthropomorphized being uh, uh, inspired by a total solar eclipse. Um, probably not all that likely, but but uh, coming back to the uh, actual, more just strictly eclipse uh, related, you know, in terms of what you actually see in eclipse. Uh, I've seen astronomical drawings of total solar eclipses, which are comparable to this one. It's a central dark disk of the moon, then with very concentrated, uh, almost uh, trapezoid uh, streamers on either side of the sun. This is, this is how uh, some total solar eclipses were depicted by professional astronomers, which does not mean to say that that's exactly how they looked. We have to think in terms of perceptions here. Um, and, uh, you know, in the mid uh, 19th century, uh, essentially, uh, they didn't have much in the way of cameras. Uh, and even if they did, they, they uh, weren't necessarily up to the task of, of photographing uh, eclipses um, until perhaps the later 19th century, early 20th century. Uh, but even then, they don't get the full range of light. Uh, so it was not uncommon for astronomers observing total solar eclipses to make drawings uh, representing the, you know, trying to, trying to depict the eclipse. And, and a lot of these drawings are quite stylized, actually. They, they don't really necessarily depict, you know, what actually was seen. It's more of a perception uh, on the part of the astronomer and they, they accentuate certain things and perhaps ignore others uh, and they, they, they make uh, what normally would be quite wavy plume-like uh, streamers into you know trapezoidal even straight lines um, which you don't really see in a total solar eclipse but nonetheless in the astronomical drawings uh, they draw the corona in some cases like a cross uh, uh, so, I do think that uh, this, disregarding this here, but, but the, the circle with the trapezoidal rays on either side, uh, it is actually comparable to some certain uh, 19th century astronomical drawings of eclipses. So, I was asked to give my uh, take on the symbolism on the inner part of the uh, Basin, and, and that's what I'm doing. And, and so, for from my perspective, you know, all of this 
is solar eclipse symbolism. And it's all about death and rebirth. You know, this basin, when it was found, had charred remains in it. Uh, so it was, at least at some point in time, used to hold the remains of the dead. Uh, and all of this symbolism is about the death and the rebirth of the sun during a total solar eclipse. Um, so it makes perfect sense, uh, you know, the association of the death and rebirth of the sun in a total solar eclipse uh, to the death and hoped for rebirth of uh, human beings. So that's my interpretation of uh, Nauth's uh, stone basin. Uh, I could add one or two things, but I think we've done a pretty thorough uh, going over. Uh, the only other thing I could really do is, is bring in other images to compare this symbol to other sun-moon conjunction symbols to see the similarity. Uh, I could also um, show the astronomical drawings that I am thinking of that, that you know are similar to this pattern here. Uh, and again, you know, we come back to this, uh, uh, you know, again, sort of like crescents and, and heading towards the, uh, what I consider to be the, the total eclipse sun here. You know, these could easily represent, uh, as I said, the moon embracing the sun, uh, but also the crescent-like uh, partial phases of a, of a solar eclipse. You know, there are actually composite photographs of solar eclipses where the... Uh, um, photographer shows all of the stages of an eclipse and so you have the crescent you know increasingly narrow crescent coming closer and closer and closer to the total eclipse sun in the center of this composite image and then on the other side of it you have the uh, you know thin and then gradually growing uh, crescent of the sun on either side of it uh, in this composite image so it's it's quite similar to this uh, again so that's my take on it. You can take it or leave it, but I know some people will take a good chunk of it, maybe not all of it, and I do admit that I am going, you know, a little out on a limb, in, especially in terms of, the, you know, this being an anthropomorphized mythical being. That That's, you know, pretty strong speculation. Um, uh, you know, a, a, a slight possibility in my view. <clears throat> but this <clears throat> idea that this crescent could potentially be not just the moon embracing the sun, but more specifically the serpent that eats the sun during a solar eclipse. Uh, I think that's a fairly real possibility. Uh, this dot could also represent the planet uh, that was seen close to the uh, totally eclipsed sun during a solar eclipse. This happens quite frequently. Um, uh, but again, it could be the head of a snake, and, and again, it could be a synthesis of both because these ancient uh, cultures from what I have seen they layered idea upon idea upon idea uh, symbol upon symbol upon symbol um, and I do think it, it's actually not how can I put it I, I think my speculation that this could potentially be a serpent and the moon eclipsing the sun uh, the eclipse serpents you know represented as the moon I think it's a very real possibility and again <clears throat> if this is indeed the case it would clearly indicate that the people who carved this symbol uh, the culture that carved this symbol understood that it was the moon that is the you know mythical serpent that eats the sun during a solar eclipse so I think on that note we'll wrap up this somewhat bloviated uh, <laughs> Um, <clears throat> description or explanation of what I think. I can be a little too wordy at times, but that's it for now.